writing this chapter, he's talking about a crisis that was taking place in Corinth. And I believe we all go through crises in life. I mean, there's called a midlife crisis. My wife's going through a midlife crisis right now. I'm just kidding. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Uh, but we all go through like a, a crisis like where something happens in your life. You're like, what am I going to do next? I need help. God, save me. And so Paul's writing this letter because this, this church was going through a, a crisis. Uh, but before I get into the message, I want to share the vision of Hope City Church. Our vision since we started our church four and a half years ago is to bring the hope of Jesus to our community, to our city, to our country, and the countries around the world. And we have done that, and we have also failed to do that. I'm just being honest with you. We've done the best to do that. But there's some times where we haven't done that as a church. And we are the church. It's not, we we got to do this together. Bring the hope of Jesus to our neighbors, to our friends, our co-workers. Bring the hope of Jesus to those that need hope. And then our mission statement is, is simple. It's based on the Bible. It's the great commandment and the great commission. Show the love of Jesus and make disciples. That's what Jesus told his, his followers. Go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And we've done that for the past four and a half years. We've baptized 33 people. I give God the glory. So not all still at Hope City Church, but we have planted a lot of seeds. And so I wanted to share that because I was talking to Jose. He's like, we, I need to work on sharing the vision, our vision. That's our vision. And uh, the truth is like, our attendance has been real low in the afternoon. So please pray with us. We're thinking about moving our service, having a, a 6 p.m. service on Saturday evenings. Uh, we're hoping that will help bring more people. We're not saying that's the silver bullet, but that's something we're praying about and we're looking into. And there's another church called Allegiance Church that wants to help Hope City Church out. They have a lot of leaders and a lot of people that want to come help, help revive our church. Because we do want to bring the hope of, of Jesus to Sacramento and we need help doing that. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so I have a short message for you today. And I've been preaching since 2007. And nobody has ever complained about a pastor bringing a short message. Except one time. One time after I got done preaching, one of the uh, an older lady, she came up to me after the service. Pastor Jose, that message was too short. I was like, wow, I never knew a, a pastor could get criti criticized for having a short message. They will get criticized if they have a long message. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a shorter message for you today. It's called Crisis in Corinth. And so I forgot my Bible. I missed it. Uh, but I have my Bible out. And so we read in 1 Corinthians 7, 25. I'm reading from the NIV. Now about virgins. I have no commandment from the Lord, but I give judgment. I give a judgment as one by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Because of the present crisis, I think that it is good for a man to remain as he is. Are you pledged to a woman? Do not seek to be released. Are you free from such a con commitment? Do not look for a wife. But if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin marries, she has not sinned, but those who marry will face many troubles in this life, and I want to spare you this. What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not. Those who mourn as if they did not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep. Those who use the things of this world as if not to engross in them. For this world in its present form is passing away. Let us pray. God, help us remember what you said to the church through Paul. That this world is passing away. Uh, 
we're not promised tomorrow. And uh, I thank you for this day, and I thank you uh, for those that are here, and I pray that you speak to us through your message, uh, through your your messenger. Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but President Biden recently said uh, on May 19th, uh, the COVID-19 emergency will officially come to an end. Uh, actually, uh, Gavin Newsom's ending the COVID-19 emergency at the end of this month. So we went through a crisis, didn't we, as, as a church, as Americans. But this crisis wasn't just for America. It affected the whole world. But according to our leaders, that this crisis is... This crisis is officially coming to an end. But how many of you know there's more crises to come? COVID-19 is not the last crisis that's going to hit America. There, we all face personal crises in life. What do you do when you're, you're going through a difficult time? Who do you turn to? Do you turn to man or do you t turn to the son of man? You turn to Jesus. It's okay to turn to friends and family, but I want to encourage you, when you're going through a crisis, turn to Jesus. He is there for you during your darkest, most challenging times. Amen? Amen. We read in 1 Corinthians 7, 26, because of the present crisis, I think that it is good for a man to remain as he is. What crisis is Paul referring to? And I, I could come up with at least three crises that were taking place in, in Corinth. And I believe those crises are still happening in our world today. The first crisis he's talking about is the moral crisis. People were sleeping around, having sex with whoever. And Paul's telling the church, all right, if you can't control yourself, go get married. And he's, he's telling the virgins here, hey, if you're ready to get married, find a good Christian husband. Find a good Christian wife. Don't go sleep around. That's not the right thing to do. And if you're married, stay faithful to your spouse. If you're a widow, be content. If God brings you a husband, great. But this world is passing away. Don't put all your hope in your spouse. I love my wife, but my hope is in Jesus. Is anybody hearing me? Yes. If you're single, be content. Jesus is your, is your lover. Yes, Jesus is your lover. And Jesus is there for you. And so Paul is talking to the married and the unmarried. That the, yes, there's a moral crisis taking place right now. People are doing whatever they want. want. We'll call it living a life. Uh, me vida loca. You know, it's in Spanish. Living a crazy life. In Corinth, they were doing just about everything you could think of. They had a saying in Corinth, whatever happens in Corinth stays in Corinth. <laughs> whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. We're living in a Las Vegas world. Las Vegas isn't just in Nevada nowadays. It's in Sacramento. Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. And so everything was going morally wrong in that society. There was a crisis. They needed Jesus Christ to save them. So Paul is writing this letter not to the worldly people. He's actually writing this letter to the church. Because they were acting immoral too. And there was a persecution that was taking place. Paul experienced, he experienced great persecution. And he saw that there was persecution to come. And he's like, you're going to go through some hard times, church. But don't worry, this world is passing. Don't put your hope in this world. Put your hope in Jesus Christ. Paul is also referring to the second coming. Judgment day is coming. Jesus is coming. That's a good thing. I'm glad that Jesus is coming. But some people don't want Jesus to come back. They're hoping that he stays in heaven forever. But I got news for you. Jesus is coming back. Ready or not, here he comes. Jesus is coming. In the book of Revelation, Jesus says not once, not twice, but three times, I'm coming soon. And God is not, 
Not a per God is, is impossible for God to lie. How soon? I don't know. But Jesus is coming soon. So Paul's referring that there's a crisis taking place. But don't worry. Jesus Christ is coming back to save the day. Can I hear a big hallelujah? Hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus Christ is coming back to save the day. He's coming to save America. He's coming to save Israel. He's coming to save Africa, Japan, you name the country. He's coming to save this world that he created for good, not for evil. We read again in 1 Corinthians 7, 29. What I mean, brothers and sisters, he's talking to the brothers and sisters of the church, that this time is short. This time is short. I remember when I first started going to church when I was a teenager. Actually, my brother invited me to church for the first time. I didn't grow up. This is my story. I didn't grow up going to church. I grew up a non-practicing Catholic. And I'm thankful for my Catholic roots. I learned about the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. I've always believed in God. I was never an atheist. But I never had a relationship with God. But my brother invited me to church. And I remember the youth pastor was talking about eternity. And he's like, hey, imagine in your mind that you're at an ocean and you have a, a teaspoon and you, you, you get the water and you try to balance that teaspoon of water and you're looking at that water in that teaspoon. Well, the water inside the teaspoon, that's your life. Eternity is the ocean. Eternity is the ocean. Sometimes we put our hope in this present world when you're only going to live to 77 if you're lucky. When God has promised you eternity. Eternity. Let's not mess up eternity by living a crazy life now. And we got to see Jesus come back and he's like, I don't even know you. I, we, when was the last time we talked? I haven't talked to you since Christmas time. What's going on? We need to talk to Jesus throughout the year and share our sins. He knows them already. I, I'm up front with Jesus. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. Save me from my moral crisis. You know, I, I've been through moral crises in my life. And I needed Jesus to pick me up out of the mud and to rescue me. How about you? And so Paul's communicating in the church, hey, this life is short. Make the most of your life. Don't waste it by living in sin, by doing what's wrong and that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt you in the end. And in a similar way, James says this in chapter 4, verse 14, if we could go there. You do not know what will happen tomorrow. Nobody here can say, I know exactly what's going to happen tomorrow. Only God knows exactly what's going to happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes. That's our life. It's a metaphor. Kind of like when, when you celebrate your birthday and you blow out the candles, that vapor evaporates quickly in a flash. Our, our life will it'll be over. And I hate to say this, church. It's sad to say this. But I just performed a funeral this past Monday for a a young person only 28 of age and that's a, the first time I performed a, a funeral for a young person I performed a funeral for an 18 year old not too long ago we're not promised tomorrow I grew up playing basketball a kid named Tim Crumry got hit by a drunk driver after he graduated from high school he's no longer with me I got a friend named Joe that passed away at the age of 30 through gun violence we're not promised tomorrow. And so James and Paul are in agreement. Don't waste your life. Live for God. Don't get involved with the life of the Corinthians or the Americans. Doing whatever you want, how you want, when you want. That's not the way to live. Make your life count. Paul is saying to the married people, to the singles, make your life count. But fix your eyes on Jesus. Don't make your spouse your focus. He's a, don't neglect your don't neglect your spouse either. We got we gotta love our, our 
our spouses, but don't make your spouse your idol. Jesus, make him your focus. If you're single, don't make your singleness your focus. Make Jesus your focus. Amen? Amen. So we live in, in, in a world where there's presently, I mean, Paul was talking about the crisis that was taking place in Corinth with the moral chaos that was happening back then. But we have moral dilemma in our world today, don't we? We have a crisis that's happening in our schools. I had a break of another fight again this past week in a math class. And guess what? This is the first fight I broke up, broke up this school year. The other fight I had to break up was between two parents. They're about to fight before school. I had to break up the two parents. What's happening in our world today? I believe what Paul was saying back then applies today. We still need Jesus to save us. Only Jesus can save us. And he, you know what he does? He saves one person at a time. And he wants to use you and me to bring that message of hope to the school, to our neighbors. And, and look for those opportunities to share Jesus with people. And I promise you, you'll get those opportunities every week if you keep your eyes open. We read in Ephesians 5, 16. Redeem the time, because the days are what? Evil. Evil. So Paul tells Corinth, and he tells uh, the church of Ephesus, hey, we're living in some dark times. Redeem the time. Your time is short. Don't get involved with, with sin. Do the Father's will. Do God's will. Live for God. Don't get all caught up in what everybody else is doing. And, and living in evil times, it, it's hard, right? It's not easy living in, in our world today. It was, a hard, it was hard for Paul, and it's hard for us. It was difficult for, for Paul. He went through a lot of persecution for living for, Je living for the Lord. And if you take your faith seriously and follow Jesus, you may get persecuted. You might not go to jail. You might get, not get killed. But you'll go through some type of difficulty if you decide to surrender your life to Jesus and, and just be all in. No more half-stepping. That was a song I used to listen to back in the day. No more half-stepping. We, we can't be half-stepping no more. We got to be all in and, and follow Jesus. Re we got to redeem the time that God has given us. Because the time we have is short. We read in 1 Corinthians 7, 31. For this world in its present form is passing away. And that's actually good news. It's not bad news. COVID is passing away. It's going to pass away. The trials that you face in life will pass away. Sin in this world, eventually it will pass away. All the bad governments will pass away. All, all the crises that we see in our world today will pass away. This is good news, for this world in its present form is passing away. One day when Jesus comes back, there's going to be no more sin, no more taxes, no more rude people, no more gossipers. There's going to be no more haters. Things are going to be all good when he comes back. The word crisis means anke. It's a Greek word, anake, anake, that. That's how you say crisis in, in Greek. It means distress. It means calamity or a pressing situation. Are you facing a, a pressing situation? Only you can answer that question. Are you facing a pressing situation? If you are, you're in a crisis. What difficulty are you facing right now? Why not give that crisis to Jesus Christ? He could handle it. Remember the song we sang at the beginning of the service? The battle belongs to the Lord. He's our Savior. You're not your Savior. 
Jesus is the Savior. What pressing situation are you facing? Are you willing to give that pressing situation to Jesus? We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. But we, and so here Paul is giving an illustration. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Where does the power come from? He says it. This all-surpassing power is from God, not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. Can I hear a big amen? Amen. amen. Yes, we will go through crises. Yes, we'll go through tough times. But you know what? Jesus is still going to give us the power to get through it. Every time. We will not be destroyed. We'll feel the, pr the pressure of life. We'll feel the pain of life. But we'll get through it. And even Jesus told his followers. These things I have spoken to you. Imagine Jesus. You're one of the twelve. And Jesus is speaking this directly to you. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Is that good news? Yes. And no, no, it doesn't matter what you're going through. In Christ, we're promised to have peace. In this world, you'll, you will have tribulation. I love Jesus' honesty. But be of good cheer. Keep a good attitude. I have overcome the world. And you know what? Because Jesus overcame the world, so will you. Jesus overcame the cross. He overcame death on the third day. I don't know what you're facing right now, but I'm here to tell you that you're going to overcome with the help of the Lord Jesus. Amen? Amen. Could we stand? I'd like to close us in worship. I'd love to pray for you. If you could bow your heads and close your eyes. If you're going through some type of crisis right now, I want you to talk to Jesus about that right now. I don't know what pressure you're facing. I don't know what difficulty you're facing. But I know one thing we all have in common. We're all going through something. And we all need Jesus. Talk to him right now if you could.